Good morning, everyone. It's April 17th and happy Easter to anyone who celebrates. And I know there are many other holidays that are celebrated during this full moon. So happy, happy to everyone. It's a wonderful day. And I'm so thrilled to be presenting um, Preston Dennett here today. Uh, he's got 36 years as a veteran UFO researcher under his belt began in 1986 when he started uh, finding out that family, friends, and co-workers were having experiences, and that's how his research career began. Uh, of course, he'd had his own experiences because uh, he's an experiencer. Um, he's, he's written over 100 articles and 28 books already. He's had his stuff um, in many UFO magazines, and the LA Times and the LA Only News, Daily News. This story here is about an exceptional woman and we're lucky enough to have Dolly S here with us. Um, she started her abduction experiences uh, early in childhood, but the first one uh, in, in um, the physical was when she was 14. And uh, I'm so thrilled to have you both here. Welcome back. Preston and welcome Dolly to our show. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so are we ready to go then? Yeah, absolutely. All right, I do have a little PowerPoint presentation. It should take me about an hour and then afterwards, uh, we'll do a Q&A. Hopefully with Dolly, we'll be willing to answer some questions as well so you can speak to her firsthand. Uh, but I'm just going to get started. So I'm going to try and share a screen here. All right, then I will just get started here. And uh, yeah, my presentation today is called Symmetry, a true UFO adventure. And this is all about the experiences of my dear friend, Dolly Safran, who decided she was going to go public some years ago and started looking for a UFO researcher and uh, was having trouble finding one that she really trusted to tell her story. And her ET contacts actually referred her to me by name, which was really thrilling and humbling for me to hear. So apparently the ETs do know about me. And uh, she reached out and we started corresponding, emailing, talking on the phone. And here we are some five, well, no, seven years later. And uh, the book has finally come out. It's about one month old, not quite. And uh, let's just get started. Uh, these are all the UFO books I've written so far, over 35, 36 years of UFO research. So you can see I've been at this a long time. And uh, this latest book, Symmetry, is my 29th book. And uh, it's all about the experiences of Dolly Safran. I can tell you with confidence that this is the most extensive case of UFO contact I've ever had the privilege to research or really even read about. Uh, I've interviewed a lot of people, many of them have had very extensive experiences, but often they have missing time. Many of them are quite fearful. Dolly is what we would call a fully conscious contactee. While she did have missing time, often as a young child at age 14, that all changed. And since then her experiences have been almost exclusively fully conscious. There have been a few incidents of missing time here and there, but no, for the most part, it's been fully conscious, as we will see. So here is Dolly's family, her mother, her, her father, Robert, and there's Dolly there on the right and her little brother, Bobby. They grew up in Florida, mostly. They did move around a lot because Dolly's father was in the army, an airborne ranger. And, uh, but they grew up largely in Florida, in a sort of farmhouse, a ranch on the edge of the Florida 
Everglades. And this is where Dolly's experiences first really began. And they began when she was very young, about 10 months old. The earliest experience she can remember is suddenly floating out of her crib. A blazing light filled the room. This was during the day. And next thing she knows, she's floating upwards, freaked her out. She's turning around and squirming and trying to get back into her crib. And that's all she really remembers. But following that, this sort of thing happened many times. And in fact, Dolly developed the habit, as you can see here, of sleeping with her legs stuck through the bars of the crib in an effort to stop this from happening. And uh, so she does remember from a very, very young age, and this is something I do hear from some contactees, their memory is extraordinary. Dolly does have an eidetic memory. Uh, that's another thing I do hear from contactees. So her experiences began very, very early. And in fact, uh, following this event, Dolly would often disappear from the house. Uh, and this would happen over and over again. Sometimes um, I, I, I'm hearing some something in the background there. So please, if you're not muted. Uh, so D Dolly kept disappearing from the house. And sometimes she would reappear, you know, in her bedroom, in the closets, in the backyard, the front yard. There was one incident at age two where she was missing from the house for uh, over an hour, a couple of hours. Uh, nobody could find her. Uh, they called the police. The police were out searching for her. And finally, they found her six miles, six full miles from the house at the local Utotem convenience store and uh, dressed only in her underwear. Dolly had no memory of how she had gotten there. Uh, but she was fine. Her feet, feet weren't tore up or anything. There was really no way for her, her to be six miles from the house. So this was the sort of thing that was going on very early and uh, really caused a lot of uh, stress for Dolly's mother. And at this time, Dolly was also experiencing paranormal events. There was one incident where she uh, spontaneously levitated up into the closet, up into the top shelf of this, this closet they had, which absolutely freaked her mother out because there was no way Dolly could have reached that high shelf. And uh, that happened more than once. So all these things were really causing a lot of stress with Dolly's mother. And uh, they bought guard dogs. They put triple locks on the doors but nothing would stop this from happening. Uh, here's Dolly at around age 12, I think, 11, 12, 13. Uh, and this is when her experiences were really ramping up, uh, but she still didn't quite understand what was going on. Uh, she was not connecting this to UFOs, but she would see them. She would be out hiking through the Florida Everglades and uh see them and then experience missing time or they would come landing down and next thing she knows she'd be being placed back in her house hours later and she started to have some memories of what was going on of being taken uh, of being in a ship of being on what appears to be another planet but at this point she wasn't thinking that these were largely nighttime experiences which she was sort of interpreting as dreams even though she knew these weren't normal dreams. And uh, she did try talking to her mom about it. Her mom did not want to hear it. Uh, her father was largely absent because he's out there with the military. So she was already learning from a very young age not to talk about this. And uh, here are the pictures of Dolly's window, the jealousy windows. And it was here that she had her first real major experience. She was uh, often, well, let me just go 
forward here one more slide. At age six, Dolly had her first real major experience that uh, really had an impact on her. And uh, they had just gone to see the movie Mary Poppins uh, some weeks earlier. And Dolly decided she was going to sit out in the front yard underneath the big ficus tree. And she was just lying down watching the, sky, the clouds and the blue sky. This was during the day. When looking up, she saw what she thought was an umbrella coming down, like Mary Poppins. She heard music playing. And she sits up and sees, well, this isn't an umbrella at all. It's some sort of craft. And the next thing she knows, she's inside of it. And there is this figure. This drawing is done by Dolly. And this is a tall gray. And this figure was very friendly, very nurturing. Um, and pictured here, you know, a large bald head, large eyes. And uh, approached Dolly. And Dolly's like, who are you? And this tall gray said, you can call me Mama. I'm going to be your main contact. We are going to be meeting in the future. You have no reason to fear, uh, but we would like to work with you. And basically just started talking to Dolly and learning about her and her interests. And this was Dolly's first experience. Again, she wasn't thinking ET. This was just an unusual looking woman who was very kind to her. Uh, which was very helpful to Dolly because Dolly's mother was quite stern and uh, their relationship was having some strife because of D Dolly's experiences, uh, largely. So this was Dolly's first major memory of having direct face-to-face -face contact. And from this point on, this was at age six, it really started to ramp up. And uh, she knew something very unusual was happening to her, but she couldn't quite connect the dots. Uh, there was talk about UFOs in her family, especially because her father was in the military. But at this point, she wasn't really thinking, you know, I'm in contact with ETs or being taken to another planet, though that's exactly what was happening. Because following this, from age six all the way up to 14, she had many, many memories of being taken to what appeared to be another world. And Dolly calls this the tree planet or the learning center. And she said, that, yeah, it was a very beautiful place filled with life. There were gravity, there was much less here on earth and in fact when she would get there she was able to jump 20 30 feet into the air something which caused uh, great consternation among the greys who had take her taken her there uh, and uh, she would go running up to these you know 10 foot tall flowers and they would try to stop her say listen you can't go running off some of the plants here are dangerous uh, dolly describes this planet as being so thick with life that the smells alone would just knock you over and just so rich in foliage and trees that it made Earth look like almost a dead planet. And each time they took her there, it was with another, with a group of other children, about a dozen of them, all girls, and they would be taken up into this massive tree and when I say massive, it's like a skyscraper, really big. And uh, they would take her to, up to this sort of treehouse, this pagoda. And this is where they would start teaching her on various subjects. Now, this was just girls, though, in a nearby tree, there were boys being taught as well. And these were mostly uh, children from Earth, but not all of them. Sometimes there would be little grays there or blue beings. And again, Dolly wasn't thinking ETs. These were just people, people who sometimes looked different. But she was waking up more and more because they were teaching her initially largely about ethics, morality, uh, doing the right thing, 
uh, but this started to move more and more towards other subjects such as spirituality, psychic development, science. A lot of it was very much science-based, especially as she grew older. So she was learning physics, mathematics, astronomy. Uh, so by age 10, 11, 12, Dolly was already very intelligent. And this caused a lot of problems back at school because while she was in grade school, uh, they were teaching very basic subjects, you know, the days of the week, the months, you know, two plus two equals four, four plus four equals eight. And this drove Dolly crazy. She already knew all this stuff. She was reading at a co college level by this point and drove her teachers absolutely crazy. She ended up spending most of her time in school being uh, ordered out of class and spending time in the library. So this was difficult for Dolly and caused some isolation, but at the same time, it was this amazing adventure. And she was still trying to figure things out at this point. Uh, it was clear to her that this was more than dreams, but each time she tried to talk to people about it, they'd look at her sideways, uh, call her a liar. Uh, so she's again, learned to keep herself quiet. She did have some really unusual experiences. One time she found herself taken to a very different environment and it was a party, uh, which appeared to be in a foreign country because everyone was speaking Swedish. Dolly does speak Swedish fluently. Uh, that was her first language, her grandmother spoke it. And she found herself at this party, which was absolutely delightful. This was again around age six or so and five, perhaps seven. And uh, it was this wonderful party with pastries and beautiful tablecloths. And uh, they were celebrating the birthday of these girls. And the, their father was a painter and had them all sort of posed so he could do sketches and paint them. And it wasn't until some years later when Dolly was a teenager that her grandmother was paging through the book of a famous artist by the name of Carl Larson and came upon this picture, pictured here at the left, which is called Kirstie's birthday. And her grandmother is staring at it and says, you know, that one girl there pictured at the inset looks just like you, Dolly. And Dolly was freaking out because she recognized herself as well. And uh, she stared at the picture and immediately flashed back to this experience at age six or so, where she remembered being taken to this party. Uh, mind you, this, when she was taken to this party, it was early 19, well, let's see, 1969 or so. Well, 1960, well, let me see. 1966 or so, but this painting was made in 1910. So it looked as if, she, I mean, there was no other explanation other than being taken back in time. And this would not be the only instance of this sort of thing happening. So this really threw Dolly for a loop when she saw this picture and remembered being taken to this party and uh, which was painted in a very famous painting in 1910. So lots of really high strangeness with Dolly's case. And another instance happened also when she was a very young girl. She remembered being taken on board the craft and there was a young gentleman there who African-American who was playing guitar and everyone was gathered around and listening to him singing. And Dolly recognized him as being a famous musician on earth. At that point, she was still too young to really uh, know his name. And it wasn't until years later when Jimi Hendrix passed away that Dolly recognized him and remembered that she had seen him on board a craft. And when I heard that, I was amazed because I had already researched Jimi Hendrix and knew that he was a UFO contactee. Uh, his bandmate, Brian Knight, uh, talked about this and how they had had a first-hand face-to-face encounter. 
Jimi Hendrix did reveal that he had numerous UFO sightings and sort of hinted at much deeper levels of contact. But yeah, Dolly apparently saw Jimi Hendrix on board a UFO. And this would not be the only time she's seen people on board UFOs and some who were, in fact, very well known. But moving along, Dolly does remember from you know, age six all the way up to 14, being taken to other planets, uh, also within our solar system. And uh, this was something that they did fairly regularly. They took her to see Saturn and all the moons of Saturn, showed her the rings close up. They took her to see Jupiter as well and other planets. Still, she wasn't fully connecting to what was happening to her until age 14. And at age 14, I'll just go back here a few slides to here. She was outside her home, looking through a telescope at the stars at night. It was a beautiful night, and uh, it was very late. This was 1973 in the Florida Everglades. Dolly's 14 years old, and her dad says, Dolly, go to bed. It's past midnight. <laughs> go to bed. And Dolly uh, packed up the telescope, went into her bedroom, and started looking outside through these windows here at the stars. She, Dolly does not sleep much. She never has. She sleeps maybe two, three, four hours a night. This is something I do hear with a lot of contactees. They don't need much sleep. And as she's looking out through this window, she starts to see all these stars moving around. A huge group of 50, maybe even up to 100 star-like objects. And they're pairing off, and she's peering at them, thinking, what the heck is going on here? When a couple of them drop down right over her area. One moves off to the east towards the Dadeland Mall area in Kendall, Florida. And one drops right over her house and hovers over the backyard. And it's a craft. It's metallic. It's some 30 feet across. It's right over the trees. It's got lights on it. Uh, it's somewhat saucer shaped, not quite. There's portholes. And through the portholes, she sees two of these figures. This is, again, drawn by Dolly. And uh, at this point, Dolly realizes she's seeing a UFO. She sees these figures. She realizes, oh my gosh, these are aliens. These are extraterrestrials. And she's staring at the vowing this time to remember. By this point, she had was absolutely dead set on figuring out what was happening to her because it was causing a lot of stress. And she wanted to know if she where she was going at night and what was happening to her. And as soon as she sees these figures, uh, they lock gazes. She's looking at them. They're looking at her. And she says, oh, my gosh, aliens. And this is when she did have a real strong flash of fear. And she turned around to hide and dive under the bed. And when she did so, the room filled with light. And the next thing she knows, it's morning. She can hear her mom downstairs and... Dolly uh, starts, stands up, realizes she's wearing someone else's pajamas. They're on inside out and backwards. Uh, so she knew something had happened, uh, but she couldn't remember. And she was furious. Uh, so she go, cleans herself up, goes downstairs and asks her mom, did you see anything last night? And her mom's like, what are you talking about? Dolly says, well, you know, lights. A UFO. And her, uh, her mom says, a UFO, and gets really angry and says, no, 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 don't talk about it. The radio comes on. They listen to the radio each morning, and uh, the newsman comes on and starts talking about UFOs and how there was a sighting by two police officers at the Dayland Mall area in Kendall. And so Dolly is thrilled because this is confirmation for her. Uh, this was the first time she ever had a cup of coffee was that morning. 
And when the UFOs came on the radio, her mom again turns around and says, don't talk about this. Don't talk about it. And Dolly's upset. She leaves the kitchen and runs into her dad, who says, listen, I heard the whole thing. We'll talk about this later. But right now, what I want you to do is go meditate on this. You need to meditate. And looking back in hindsight, Dolly realizes that her father knew exactly what had happened to her. And she later found out that he himself was a contactee. So Dolly goes into the bathroom and meditates and starts to recall that she was, in fact, taken on board this craft. She starts having flashes of memory of seeing Mama, the gray alien pictured earlier, of seeing the shorter grays, uh, of being on board this craft and the whole deal. And uh, she goes to school. Turns out her best friend had seen UFOs on the same night. And uh, long story short, these memories flooded back into her mind. And uh, her, she approached her dad about it. And her dad approached her. And uh, she didn't want to tell her dad, you know, I think I've been on board a UFO. Uh, but he kept questioning her. And when Dolly wouldn't speak about it, he said, listen, I had this experience at age, I think it was uh, around the same age, 15, where I was taken on board. And he described this whole experience where he had gone camping with his little brother and was pulled on board and met gray ETs face to face. They talked to him about what he wanted to do with his life, which was be an architect which he ended up being. Uh, and this allowed Dolly to open up and tell her experience. And what she recalled at age 14 was being taken on board this craft. And she was greeted by mama. She was greeted, greeted by the shorter three foot tall grays, who she later learned were AI, artificial intelligence, sort of biological androids. And uh, Dolly was quite emotional, uh, freaking out. And in fact, she was so stressed out, she actually threw up. And uh, Mama and the Grays helped her. They calmed her down, cleaned her up, uh, put her in a little room where they decontaminated her and started speaking with her saying, you know, it's all right. You remember this, you've been with us many times. And Dolly did remember. And this is when her memories really coalesced, came together and she realized exactly what was happening. And she had a long talk with the Greys. And uh, in fact, with the ship itself, the ship itself is an embodied entity and Dolly gave him the nickname Talada. That's not his real name. Uh, T-L-E-R-A is how she spells it. His name is much longer. She can't pronounce it. Uh, but Talada started talking to her as well. and says, you remember me, right? And Dolly did. She remembered being on board this craft many times. And they asked her during this experience, do you want to work with us? Are you ready to remember? And Dolly said, yes. In fact, I don't want you to take me anymore unless I remember everything. I want to remember. And so this is when Dolly became a fully conscious contactee. This is when she completely overcame her fear of these experiences. And on this particular incident, uh, they not only talked to her, asked her if she wanted to work with them. They gave her a tour of the craft. They took her up into the engine room and asked her how, you know, what she wanted to learn. And Dolly says, I'd like to learn how to fly the craft. And they said, okay. And this is what they started to teach her. And they actually sat her down in the helm while the Greys piloted the ship to the moon. And they flew around it several times, made a soft landing at one point. And she could see the earth off in the distance. And they said, that's the cradle. That is where your home is. That is the home of humanity. 